All right, so today we're gonna to talk about the Google Core update, what's happened so far, the winners and the losers and some of the trends that I'm seeing, plus what's left to come because there's still some crazy updates coming. And if you haven't seen it already, I'm sure most people watching this have seen the Core update, but it was announced on March 5th right here. So there were two updates released. One of them is the Core update and one of them was the Spam update. These have both been rolled out on the same day. And you can see that they're still rolling out, right? So we've still got some time left to go. And the thing I would say about core updates, usually they last a few more weeks, right? So if it's already been two weeks so far, it might be another two weeks before we see the end of this. Now I'm going to come on to some of the biggest winners and losers in a minute. But let's talk about the three things they were targeting. So number one is scaled content. Basically strengthening their policy to reduce the amount of websites scaling their content. I would say from what we've seen, that's typically targeting AI sites, doing content at bulk, and they're trying to stamp out the low quality spammy stuff. Next up, they've called this site reputation abuse, but this is basically Parasite SEO, right? So they've basically said that we consider low value third party content produced primarily for ranking purposes without close oversight of a website owner to be spammed, right? And the thing here is they're actually publishing this policy two months in advance. So they published this update on March the 5th, as we can see right here, but actually enforcement won't be until May the 5th, just to give site owners some time. And the final thing is expired domain abuse, right? Basically people buying expired domains and then trying to rank them really quickly. So these are the three things they're targeting in this spam update, which I think makes sense because they had to do something about Parasite SEO and they had to do something about a lot of low quality AI sites. And we'll come on to some of the websites that have done well and done badly based on this. So there's this report by Systrix that basically looks at the updates from March the 8th to the latest update, which is March the 15th, as you can see here. And you've actually got quite an interesting table of how they're performing before, after the change and the change percentage, right? So you can see, for example, that if we take this website, food.com, which is obviously a massive site, you can see that the traffic has gone up very nicely since the core up, right? So these big authority sites are performing very well. And I'll talk more about that in a second, but it's not necessarily the case for everyone. So if we look at this website, for example, beautyanswer.com, DR66 right here, traffic is going down a lot as you can see. Right? So before the update, it was here. Now the traffic is dropping and that's pretty much halved in one month. Pretty crazy there. Now these were quite big brands, obviously like food.com, big brand right there. And that's something I'll talk about in a second. Now let's talk about some smaller sites that are actually performing really well. So for example, if we look at this thread from Keywordian, who's looked at nine niche sites that are winning during the core update and spam updates, as you can see, we can check out Gadget Mates right here and you can see their traffic is just going up like crazy. So previously they were at 327,000 traffic a month. Now they're at 784,000 traffic. So quite a high authority site right there with a lot of backlinks pointing to them. And this is some of the content they're creating. Now, one of the things that I've seen a lot of people talking about is how sites with super laser targeted content is performing really well. But if you actually look at, for example, like gadgetmates.com, they've got posts about the iPhone 14, but you can see that actually a lot of the content is not that related. So for example, they talk about YouTube, Xbox, bottleneck calculators. What does GPT stand for? So not all of the content is super related, but the traffic is going up like crazy. But again, if you actually plot the amount of backlinks versus traffic, you can see that they correlate very closely. Now, if we look at some of the backlinks they're building, and we'll sort this by do follow and then one link per domain and sort by the newest backlinks first, you can see some of the links that they're getting through to their site, when they came through, etc. So you can see a lot of these backlinks are coming through every hour. So tons of backlinks are being built to this site, which is helping it rank better. And the traffic is more than doubled month for month. Pretty insane there. Here's another site performing pretty well. And this is an interesting one because actually their DR is only 12, right? So that's a pretty low authority site. If we look at some of the keywords that ranking for, all of this is very, very focused. So this is cakes by mk.com. And if you actually search cake on the page, you'll see that every single keyword that they're ranking for is very closely related to their main domain and niche. But you can see how well they're performing during this update. Now, the other thing that Google actually did a lot of this update, which is quite unusual, is they did these pure spam manual action penalty. And they actually released a FAQ on their website, as you can see right here. So this was released on March the 12th. 
which is like an FAQ that talks about the manual actions and what sort of happened and why they're doing it. So for example, they've mentioned that they've issued a pure spam manual action when a site appears to use aggressive spam techniques that violate Google spam policies, including tactics like automatically generate content, cloaking, scraping content, etc. Now, again, I think they're clapping down on this. I'll come on to some of the examples of sites that have received a manual action penalty who were getting a lot of traffic in a second. But again, I think they're clamping down on this because of the amount of sites creating content at scale, and they just have to find some clean way of creating content. Not that I'm saying the SERPs are better now, but I think they have to manually intervene because there's so many sites creating content at scale. So they've released some steps on how to resolve a pure spam manual action, which you can see right here, some key considerations, and some FAQs, right? So for example, can fixing just a few pages lead to the removal of the manual action? And they actually say no. It's got to be the whole site. They also talk about even if you correct the issues on your site, it can take quite a while to restore the rankings. And they've even got a question here that says, why was my site de-indexed for spam, but there's still other spammy sites ranking? So important to bear in mind there that this is not an algorithmic penalty, right? So when Google gives a manual action penalty, they're manually penalizing that site. Now, if you want to see some examples of sites that have taken a big hit, Here's one, so love the Maldives.com. And they were actually de-indexed previously, but you can see them back on Google right now. So you can see a lot of their content is still indexed. So I think there was some sort of reversal recently when it came to the update. But as you can see, if you check out their traffic on Ahrefs, the traffic has not been restored at all. So if we just look at the organic traffic of this website, at their peak, they were at like 599,000 traffic a month, and now they're down to one. Pretty insane, right? So that's a huge drop in traffic. Now, another one that got de-indexed was Freshers Live, and this was actually during the core update, as you can see. So if we check their site on Google, you can see that is nowhere to be found. So that has not been reversed. They were previously ranking for 1.6 million traffic. So back in February, they were previously getting 6.5 million traffic, and now they've been de-indexed. Pretty crazy. Now, Jackie Chow was actually another one who received a manual action penalty, but you can actually see that he tweeted yesterday, so March the 19th here, that he received his website back, right? So his reconsideration request has been approved and Google has removed any manual action penalties on the site. And if you actually look at this manual action reconsideration request, he's actually blurred out the URL, but you can see the message right here, which is, please revoke this manual action penalty, not my site. So that was submitted for reconsideration on March 14th. And by the 19th, it was already restored. So five days. Now, if you look at Reddit and Cura, which are two of the sites that were performing really well since the helpful content update last year, when a lot of other sites got hit, these sites started performing really well. And you can see that Cura's traffic has pretty much stayed the same. So it's not had a massive difference in traffic but Reddit is actually going up, right? So Reddit was previously at 358 million. Now it's at 368 million. And actually there was an interesting study on originality.ai pre-update that talks about how there's up to 45% AI content in SEO marketing subreddit. So a lot of Reddit subreddit are getting hit with tons of AI content right here. So for example, with marketing subreddits, AI content has a range of 23.53%. So you can see that the content marketing subreddit holds a majority of AI content with up to 45% of it being AI content, but the traffic is going up. So AI content is still ranking, which is quite interesting. And also the Parasite SEO update has not really been released and probably won't come out until May the 5th. The other thing that was announced is that Google will collect feedback after the March court and spam updates have rolled out. So you can see this article on seoroundtable.com written by Barry Schwartz. And they've basically said that they're going to update the search status dashboard once the updates are rolled out fully. Plus, they're going to announce and open up a form after the update has concluded for any feedback that people might have. So you can see they tweeted this out right here. So when the update is finished, as we shared in our blog post, we'll open up a feedback form specifically so creators can share examples that we can explore together. They've said our ranking systems are not perfect, but we specifically pre-announced having this form so we can get feedback to help us improve in the future. And you can see all sorts of mixed feedback when it comes to responses to them. I actually ran this poll 17 hours ago on my YouTube community. As you can see, it got 381 votes right here. And you can see the breakdown of how the Google Core update has performed for everyone so far. So you can see that 35% of people said that they're not seeing much impact. 
52%, the vast majority, said that the Google Core update has been brutal for them. And then 13%, the minority, have said that they're crushing it. And similar sort of results on my Twitter as well. This only got 77 votes right here. Feel free to follow me if you want. But you can see that 41% of people said it's been brutal. 41% said not seeing much impact. And 16% said they're crushing it. Now, it's still early days when it comes to the Google Core update. I think we've got at least one or two weeks left before it fully rolls out. And you can see the SERP volatility for the last 30 days on SEMrush's volatility sensor right here. So you can see it's still on the high range in terms of volatility. It's going up and down quite a lot. And you can also see some of the categories that have been hit the biggest, right? So news is one of the most volatile right here, which is 9.4 out of 10 in terms of volatility. Whilst health is pretty chill, 4.910, not even volatile. That's pretty normal range right there. So that gives you an idea of which industries are being hit the hardest when it comes to this update. Interestingly as well, during this time, Google actually has a new head of search, which you can see Liz Reed, who apparently was the person previously leading Google search generative experience. And some are saying as well, there are hints that more search generative experience features could be rolled into Google search engine. And if you're not familiar with that, basically you can actually get free access if you go to Google labs, but you can see here, like, for example, if we type in a random keyword like this, you can see that it generates an answer right here. And the interesting thing about this is really only the top three results are going to get more traffic, right? If the search generative experience stays as it is, most people are not going to scroll all the way down here. They're just going to stick to this content up here, right? Now, like I said, still early days, the core updates are still rolling out. It will probably be announced here once they've finished rolling out, especially the core update. I think that'll take a bit longer. So what I would say is don't make any crazy changes to your site. Things are going to be very volatile. See how it plays out. You know, we've seen sites get de-indexed and then re-indexed. We've seen reversals during the whole update. So it's an interesting time, but very volatile. And you just got to kind of wait it out. I also think that a lot of people ask me like, okay, what are the conclusions and what sort of things can we draw from this? I think it's too early to say. And really you can't get any decent analysis until months after because you have to collect all the data and then analyze it properly. So thanks so much for watching. If you want to get a free SEO course, feel free to get that. Links in the comments and description. And if you do want to book in a free SEO strategy session about how to get more leads, traffic, and sales to your website with SEO, feel free to book that in and we will give you an SEO domination plan. We'll answer any questions that you have. You'll discover the best link building strategies for your website. So feel free to book in. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.